So this is the Falstad circuit simulator at www.falstad.com slash circuit. And it's free. It's been around for a long time. It does a fairly good a job of, of simulating uh, circuits. And uh, so we're going to use it to investigate how different electrical components behave. And this circuit that is here is actually the one that's there by default. Uh, so when you first load the simulator, it will look like this. And if I, I, I have a, a power source here, so probably a battery, a resistor, an inductor, another resistor, and a capacitor. So when I close the switch, current is going to be able to flow through the circuit. But current is going to take the shortest path to get to its destination. So it's actually going to go like this. So let's close that. Notice that just for a moment, you got a little surge of movement here. Uh, but right now you can see current is really just flowing right here. And here's where things are going to change, though, because we have current flowing through an inductor, which is creating a magnetic field. That magnetic field isn't going to instantaneously just disappear when we turn off the current. So watch what happens to the circuit when I break its pathway. Notice that... Current starts moving here, but now it's rocking back and forth. And the reason for that is we have a capacitor. And as the capacitor charges in one direction, then it will current will slow. And then current will reverse. And as it charges in the other direction, then it will slow and so on and so forth. So it kind of rocks back and forth. And this is just a, a basic circuit, though it's not the simplest circuit in the world. And we're going to make our own circuit, though, just to get used to how things work. Notice that by clicking, left-clicking, and dragging, I can select everything, and I can delete it all. And now I have a blank slate. And you can either use the Draw menu to add things to the screen, or notice that some things have these little letters next to them. These are shortcuts. So if I wanted to add a resistor, for instance, I can hit the R key and then draw. And if I wanted to add an LED, that's an L. And so I press the L key. Oh, whoops, apparently I didn't press the L key. So L. There we go. So there's our LED. Looks like a diode, but notice that um, it actually shows up as an LED, except when I hover over it. And then uh, I have a resistor, a diode. We need a power source as well. So we would use V for that because a power source creates a voltage. So there's a voltage. And then I need to connect the circuit back up. There's two ways to do that. One, I could create a switch or I could just wire it together. And for the purpose of this, I'm going to add a switch. So if I go to draw, I can go find. Inputs and sources, no. Outputs, no. Active components, no. Passive components, ah, there we go. So notice that, as you might have guessed, a switch is just an S. So if I hit S and then draw, I get a switch in there. I can either draw all the way to the end here, or if I wanted to, I could draw and then fill in the rest of it with a wire. So W is wire, and I can just connect those up. And right now, um, it's not doing anything. No current is flowing. And why is that? Well, it's not because of the switch. Well, it turns out that diodes are directional. Current will only flow through a diode through one direction. So I might need to change this. There's a couple ways to do that. One is I could try to grab on to this, but notice that it doesn't let me grab on to that. It just adds a new piece. 
If I hold the control key though, I can grab onto the end and I can move it around. Or if I hold the shift key, I can move the whole thing around. But that's not the easiest way to flip this around. If I right click, I can go to swap terminals. Boom. Now notice current has started to flow and the LED has turned on because it's now oriented the correct direction. So turns out that when you're looking at, at these things, um, batteries are directional. They have a specific direction. LEDs are directional. Resistors are not directional. It doesn't matter which way they're facing. And switches are not directional, except for turning them off and on and off and on. So this is kind of just a basic circuit built in the Falstad simulator. I can go up here. I can turn off the simulator. I can turn it back on. I can speed up the simulator. And I can also show the current at a higher rate of speed. So you can adjust it so that you get a sense as to what's going on. And just set it so that it, it seems to work as it should. Okay. So usually somewhere in the middle is going to be just fine. But I like my current to go a little bit faster than that. Now watch what happens if I go to the resistor and right click. So if I right click, there is an edit option. And I can say edit. Oh, I can change the resistance. So let's change the resistance to instead of 1K, which means 1,000 ohms, let's change it to 100,000 ohms and apply it. And notice. Our current is crawling because now there's a lot more resistance. Or if I change the original 1,000 ohms to 100 ohms, now it's moving a lot faster. Or how about 1 ohm? Now at this point, I'm probably in danger of heating up the battery and well probably not with an led the led would probably fry first but yeah that's probably not the safest way to be running this circuit so let's go ahead and break that circuit so that it doesn't blow up on us now one thing i can do is when this is running i can check any part of this circuit to see what's going on so like right now I can hover over the resistor and I see that the current through the resistor right now is 2.573 amps, which is a very high current value for a circuit like this. And the voltage that's being dropped again across the resistor is 2.573 volts. Now, if I go look over here, I can see that the voltage being dropped by the LED is also about two and a half volts. And it's dissipating a lot of power. And that's why this LED is in big trouble. Okay, that power, 6.245 watts, that's a lot of watts for an LED unless it's designed for that. So let's go ahead and change this back to a more reasonable number. Okay, now we're back to 1K. Notice now that the LED is now dropping a lot less voltage and the resistor is dropping more. That's what that resistor is for. It's, it's to prevent the current from going crazy and blowing up the LED. So notice that the current going through the resistor now is also much lower. And notice that the current here is exactly the same current here is well exactly the same and the current here is huh, exactly the same and when you have a closed circuit like this the current will be the same all the way around so there's a basic introduction to the circuits but there is a way to actually track what's happening over time 
So if I come here and look at, let's say, uh, let's go to the resistor. I want to right click on the resistor and notice I can view in a scope. So let's view in a scope. Boom. And notice that it is actually graphing current, voltage drop, resistance is constant. Watch what happens though when I open the switch. Notice that it's graphing this over time and so it's going to update those values over time and there is a gear over here that lets you change some settings so you can uh, change the appearance of that graph if you wanted to it's not necessary but but you can and if you don't like it right click on it and say remove okay I could do the same thing with an LED now if I click view in undocked scope, notice that I have this, this scope over here. And if I hold shift, I can drag it wherever I want. Just be careful you're not drawing things when you're not holding shift. So let's delete that. So yeah, hold shift if you want to move it around. Okay. So there's kind of an introduction to a Falstad circuit simulator. There are a lot of things you can add. If you right click in an open space, notice I get this quick menu where I can go and find all these different things. And a lot of them have letters assigned to them, but not all. And then if I right click on an object, then I get the, the uh, quick menu for uh, things that are in context for that particular object and um, sliders interesting I don't even know what that is well explore tell me what it is and uh, I'm curious what you find out anyway that's a basic introduction let me know what your questions are